Um. 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 How can I explain this? This is a hard one. I think that's something to do with geography. I think I remember that from GCSE. Sometimes attention seeking. Two people in one person. Probably after a round of golf on a Saturday morning. Just get really upset. Because they want to look like a stick or whether they want to look like a roly poly. Could be cod spelt wrong, I don't know. Eating too much, eating too little, not knowing what to eat, being too thin, being too fat. I'm probably quite uneducated in what schizophrenia is. Attention seeking, I suppose. I wish my wife had this. Uh, somebody who likes to be very clean and very organised. The part of you that people forget about to keep kind of intact. Obsessive compulsive disorder, so being obsessive over a particular um, topic. I thought it was quite attention seeking until I had it um, and it sort of came over me like a cold. During the time that I suffered heavily from anxiety, I remember feeling quite worthless every day, quite weak every day. Being friends with a load of lads, I think the stigma around mental health made it very difficult to, to talk to people. I'm a sufferer, but I look normal. You can't see my pain. If I had a broken leg, you could see a broken leg. You can't see mental health. When I was in the creative manic phase, it was like my life was in Technicolor. It was in 3D, high definition color. And then when I went into the depressed phase, my life was in black and white. I'm a psychologist and I work with mental health and the church. People experience spells of really high mood and spells of really low mood. Each spell can last weeks or even months, so it's much, much longer than normal ups and downs of daily life. I know loads of people who have bipolar disorder who are happy, successful, they have families and careers and everything, so it's treated with medication, but once you've got medication sorted, um, life can be pretty good. It started with not being able to stand on lines because of the fear that people I love were going to die. Washing and scrubbing my hands for 64 minutes. My hands were in a constant sort of scab and bloody kind of state. It does make me sad to think they're scarred now, but I suppose it's, just, it's also a sign that I survived it. So self-harm is a coping strategy. It's one that um, I've relied on for a long time to cope with difficult emotions. A lot of people think of self-harm as something that's an attention-seeking behaviour but in fact a lot of the time it's a total opposite. People might go to great lengths to hide what they're doing. When you rely on it it can be really difficult to stop doing and to let go of and it can become quite addictive but actually recovering from self-harm and finding other healthier ways to express emotions is really possible. I was diagnosed with a form of schizophrenia when I was 20. Lose in touch with reality, you just don't know what's real and what's not. But people tend to think that those with schizophrenia are violent, dangerous, but actually schizophrenia can be managed. A lot of people are out there living, working, functioning well with schizophrenia. So people need to know that.